Hello, I'm the Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Susie. And we are in the Eyes of Terror. We are? We are. Okay. And we are in the tower. We are on the terror couch. I thought you said we were in the terror <laughs> tower. <laughs> we are in the terror tower on the terror couch. <laughs> I thought, I was, I swore that's what you were going to say. Terror tower. We are in the terror tower. We need a terror tower. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we had a recording in a terror tower? It would sound horrible. It really would. <laughs> be better than here, though. Possibly. Possibly. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is our second one. How long, more a long time for long this? <laughs> uh, okay, so, uh, let's get some things straight. Especially with these, uh, these viewer sent in ones that we are not paid for these they just ask us to do them we do them part of the the thing is that they have to be accessible or they give us the dvd we had and that's the only sort of like what we get and then every opinion is our own we don't we're not paid to give good yes. or bad opinions and, and i am not one to sugarcoat so and we're going to always tell it how it is uh, with these movies. That's what our viewers expect, and that's what they're going to get. Okay, with that said, I guess we could do a what are we drinking thing first. So what are you drinking? Not enough booze. <laughs> Am I right? I can't have booze. I know. For, but for this movie, not enough booze. <laughs> I think it would probably make it more interesting. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're just drinking what you're... Um, you're I'm really not drinking anything right now, but... Occasionally water? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I am drinking a peanut butter milk stout. I don't know how this is going to taste, to be honest. Sounds pretty funky. Yep. It's by Tailgate Brewery. Um, it's milk stout with a peanut butter flavor. Really? Says it in the name. Yep. It is 12 fluid ounces. It's a 5.8% ABV. Hey, it contains gluten. I'm trying to figure out where it's brewed at. Oh, it's brewed in Nashville. Does that look like Tennessee to you? Mm -hmm. Looks yeah. like a fat Tennessee. I, I For a while, I was like, what is that? <laughs> Uh, they had to like squish it up to get it to fit yeah, in space. Yeah, but I mean, from like this angle, it looks like a weird state too. Mm -hmm. That's what was throwing me off. So they're on Charlottesville Pike. Charlottesville Pike in Nashville. No, Charlotte Pike. Sorry. Charlotte. Pike in Nashville. Yep. All right, pick this up at a Trader Joe's. You like Charlottesville Pike? I know that is. Yeah, me too. It's in a can. Not the most desirable. Nah. Most beers are coming in cans, though, anymore. It's easier to ship. It's easier to produce. Mm -hmm. Cheaper to produce, I'll say that. Maybe not easier, cheaper. And it, it, you don't have to worry about breakage and things like that mm -hmm. as much. And then also, uh, as I was told, it helps with the light penetrating to the glass. So... I mean, I prefer, I think it's a little bit more classier, I guess, to drink out of a, a bottle, but I can understand the can situation. Yeah. Peanut buttery. <laughs> Tastes like a sandwich. A bit. It's just missing the jelly. It tastes like I'm just drinking peanut butter at this point. I mean, it doesn't lie. Yeah, it's just, it has one flavor. Peanut butter. No jelly time for you. No jelly time. I feel like I need some jelly, though. To, just to... I mean, it's a stout. It's a, he it's a heavy peanut butter stout. Would I get it again? No. <clears throat> just because... This is like a one-off thing. I can't imagine drinking a six-pack of this. Mm -hmm. You know, not getting around with your buddies going, Hey, you guys want to drink some peanut butter? Beer at a bonfire. <laughs> I mean, you really have to like peanut butter in order to, to enjoy this. So, like I said, it's 
Like I, like I feel like I'm. I need to be licking a spoon of jelly after each, each, swig. Mm. I mean, that's diabetes. Weird, weird. It just it smells smell. like alcoholic-y peanut butter. Yeah, it's and it's in liquid form, so it's sort of a mind screw. Mm. Thank you for listening to this labor of love. We hope you're enjoying this episode and continue to do so. Crazy Susie and I try to bring you a quality podcast. If you wish to help us out, we have a few ways to do so. We have a Patreon with a variety of perks that range from a dollar, and that goes up to 20 We also have your Redbubble and a Teespring merch store with a slew of shirt designs that range from t-shirts to hoodies, blankets, and pillows. We also do a stream on YouTube and Twitch and a variety of other platforms. That's every other Sunday a month at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please follow us on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up to date on what is going on with the streams, new merch releases, and just to see our daily lives. And finally, you can passively support us by listening to us listen to us on Radio Public, a free podcast catcher that pays the creators. We also appreciate all the likes, comments, and subscriptions you have given us. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of this episode. So the film we're doing is Unlisted Owner. The director of this film asked us to do it. His name is Jed Bryan. We found this film on Prime, Amazon Prime. He's also selling it a hard copy. He's been really pushing the hard copy. Um, I will say that there are a lot of positive reviews for this film online. And he's really been pushing this film. So... We went into viewing this film with a very positive mindset and probably didn't have as positive a mindset after viewing the film. Yeah. The movie takes... It's kind of slow getting into it. It's really not a genre we enjoy anyway of shake cam. Um, Found footage. We're not into found footage, really. It's not one of our favorites, no. And... Some of the details are kind of sketchy. It's They're not very clear. And then midway through the film, it seems like things kind of pick up and you understand the details are more clear. And you, you know, there's a clear path of how the film is going. Three-fourths of the way through the film, you feel like, you know, you understand what's going on finally because at the beginning... It's sort of let's everything just, wasn't clear. Well, I mean, we could explain. And then the end just punches you right in the face, like you. It's like wow. Okay. Uh, the end. Not that the end seems extremely shocking, but considering everything, the first three fourths of the movie wasn't extremely great. The uh-huh. end is. Yeah. And, pretty good. I mean, you know. The end is the end makes the movie for me. Mm-hmm. But so. if, if you're not a big fan of uh, found footage, it this one seems a little bit shakier than most. At the beginning, it is, but I think maybe that's the intent because at the beginning, there's children carrying the film and the family, and it it is truly amateur yeah. videoing. So. Okay, but the problem is, is people get nauseated quickly with that type of film. Yeah. So if you're not a fan of it makes it nauseated, I would say pass on this film. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but for people that are fans of the... Found footage genre. That type of genre, you know, like... What's the one that first comes to mind? Uh, Blair Witch Project. The Blair Witch, things like that. VHS. But again... I always like to warn people with small children, please view it yourself first before you allow small children to view Wait, this it. Wait, one, this one, I'm just saying, could cause motion sickness. Um, and so if you get motion sickness easily... There is a lot of talking about sexual things. Yeah. There is a lot of foul language. And drinking involved. Stuff like that. Um, 
So if you're somebody that's offended by that type of thing, I personally don't have an issue with it. But, and other people had mentioned in some of their comments about the film that they felt it was excessive. Like I am forced to use proper, or I use proper English in a daily on a daily basis, even though I do have a country accent because I'm an English major. But the Bunny Man forces me not to use f bombs in our podcast because we like to expand our viewership to all ages, and we do have nieces that watch our po- or listen to our podcast. Well, it's not just so. that. I just don't see it as ne- necessary. It is not necessary, but sometimes you get in the moment and... I, I get it. You know, but, so... I mean, but it, I feel I've like... I've tried very hard to be better about not saying certain words. So, that being said... But we also live in two different worlds. I live in a very professional world. On a normal daily basis, you don't have to worry about that. Right. So, that being said, if you have small children and this is a film you want to view... I would advise that you view it first before you allow small children to watch it so you yourself can form your own opinion about it. As we've said in the past, we will not dictate that for you. Yes, so let's get into it. So, Unlisted Owner, 2014. It is how long? One hour and 14 minutes. And it gets a 3.9 out of 10 on IMBD. IMDB. Whatever. <laughs> I always get those two switched around. That's why I write it down. <laughs> and it is a drama or thriller. I would say that's fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, it is very dramatic, but yet it does have that thrill. You're not really sure what's going on, and then I'll, finally... I'll put it this way. The drama is very teenagery, though. Young adult-ish, Yeah. Fresh out of high school, 18-year-olds. Well, that would be young adults, honey. Well, young adults anymore... Okay, yes, fine, that works. We're old. That's young adults. That's that's our children's age. That's young adults. Well, I'm going to get the uh, early bird <laughs> special. I'm not that old. <laughs> get my walker. Pop my teeth in the fizz fizz. <laughs> Silly thing. <laughs> the director is Jed Bryan. The writers are Jed Bryan and Tyler Landers. The cast is Chris, Chris, Chris? Ash. Mm-hmm. My mouth doesn't want to function. Chris Ash plays Chris Martin. Levi Atkins plays the owner. This is Chloe ben- Bendict plays Chloe Roth. Abby Bryan plays Abby Martin. Bitly Bryan plays Child Bypasser. Jed Bryan plays Jed Groves. So you see what they did there? They took their first names and just changed their last names. Smart. Heidi <laughs> Corona mm. plays Heidi Summers. Mm. Gavin Groves plays Gavin Landers. Griffin Groves plays Griffin Potts. And for a full list, you can view that at imdb.com. The location of the film mm. is Sumner, Illinois. And this film was writer-director Jed Bryan's film debut. I don't know. The next I'm going to expect is a cheese beer at some point. Oh, this is weird. I really feel like there were some nuances of this film that we probably didn't understand. And we, we always view really? films... It's a pretty two-dimensional film. We always view films once, especially if they're ones we hadn't watched before. We view it one time, and then we view it again, and then take our notes that second time. Because I feel like if we're looking down and writing notes, there's going to be details that we miss. 
Well, but and most I, of the time I type my notes instead of but writing I, them because I don't I want to be looking my, down. I usually give my rating the first viewing. That's fine. That's not my point. You're not going to miss details then. But my ratings are. But we you, still don't know what the intent. I, I get that it. the director had. So that's what I mean. There's nuances. But I mean, the point is, is I don't want to read between the lines of possible. If it's, I don't want it to be slapped on my face, but I don't want to be trying to grasp at straws either. You know, trying to read between the lines of is there other nuances that we may have missed without viewing it, with viewing it. No, because a normal average viewer isn't going to do that. But since we're picking it apart. Yes, but I, but I also have the theory nice of... Nice for us to have. But I also but. look at the theory of we are, you know, we are <clears throat> recommending these films to other people. I mean, I always recommend people to view things for themselves so they can come up with their own opinions, you know. They don't need to just hear ours and take that as... The gospel. You know, they need to view things and come up with their own opinions. Can you imagine, in, in the Eyes of Terror gospel oh book, God. <laughs> book of horror? Okay. So, the owner house has been vacant for several years because of its very dark history. Oh, and that is the name of the house. It is, I guess, the owner. Owner is like the last name of the last person. A family who just moved in has been murdered, causing the curiosity of a group of friends to get the best of them, deciding to break in and investigate with handheld cameras would be the worst decision of their fun-filled night. The terrifying and suspenseful footage has been edited for the film Unlisted Owner. Okay. And it actually does open up with like this monologue thing, so I'll read. That's not obnoxious at all. <clears throat> I hate to know if that's what's going when it comes out. <clears throat> the following video recordings are evidence of horrific events known as the owner killings that took place in Lawford County, Illinois on the day of October 23rd, 2010 and March 23rd, 2011. Footage from five separate video cameras, some of which the video was damaged and corrupted, have been reconstructed and edited together by the Lawford County Sheriff's Department. Hi, I'm the Sheriff. <laughs> so the film begins in Lawford County with the family moving into the new into a new home, and with very shaky camera footage. Chloe Roth on 10 10 is manning the camera to document her family's experience of moving. The family is moving their things in. That night, the daughter freaks out saying there are people in the house. The dad encourages her to go back and lay down. Choppy scenes of her being drug off and dad with blood on his head and weird markings being covered in plastic. I do want to apologize if you happen to be a headphone listener and you pick up on random background noise. That's not our fault. That's just the apartment complex we live in. Yeah. Sorry it's about that. Sunday night and everybody's lively. Our walls are quite thin. Mm -hmm. In the next scene, you see Jed Groves is filming. This the date is ten twenty three ten. So the following day, Jed is hanging with his guy friends and enjoying some beer 
and unlike the wholesome family from before, he and his buddies have limited vocabulary. That's my nice way of saying, uh... Douchey. Oh, I wouldn't say that, because I speak like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um... No, 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 they're douchey. I wouldn't say that. Oh, chudderific. They use a lot of foul language. No, there's just their just their general attitude is chutterific. Douchebag. They are a bunch of twenty something dudes that are acting like high schoolers. That is more like sixteen year olds. I guess that's high school. But I can honestly say that they know their lines. Their lines are not that difficult. Unless they are improving as they go along. Unlike the family before that really sounded robotic they didn't sound like they knew their lines they sounded like they were reading them off of cards so they got that going for them i mean they they have a lot of profane personality they have a lot of profane words that they're using but they at least sound like they know their lines hey they got that let's see they got that going for them and they do seem to have an actual past they seem to have to be actual friends unlike the family who didn't seem to have a familiar relationship yeah it, it seemed like the stifled. relationship that the family had was forced it was a forced kind of a thing forced family fun this group of goofballs hear on the radio that the new family was found murdered in their home and they decide to go check it out Jed keeps the camera rolling. Griffin thinks it's disrespectful to film, even though he wants to find out what happened. They stay and watch the family's bodies be removed from the home. Tanner sneaks up on the group and tells them he heard the family was murdered, and he thinks it was a serial killer. He sees from what he can piece together from store. He, I'm sorry, I totally screwed that up. He says from what he can piece together from stories is that the family that lived at this home 15 years ago, the father was a union worker. He was not home much and the wife was home most of the time. He comes home and finds out she is cheating and he locks his wife and two children in the basement and catches the house on fire. But the man still lives. And every worker who worked to repair the home has been injured. He thinks a serial killer has killed this new family that had moved into the home. The guy thinks his idea of serial killers, the guy thinks his idea of serial killers is stupid and tells him just that. The guys decide to go on their camping trip and invite their female friends along. But, I mean, like, Griffin, who was sort of like shows up says he doesn't want to go camping next to the house and that threw me off like they were talking in front of the house and stuff like that talking about that you should go on their camping trip blah 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 that mm-hmm. they've been planning and Chris says I don't want to go camping next to the house I'm like right, was your camping trip the plot next to it yeah I'm sort of confused on like were you going to go backyard camping like little children? What, what was the plan here? This portion cuts to the investigation of the film Tanner Lewis is the first to be investigated. He tells the sheriff that he had told his friends about the family. He is told that his friends are missing. He asks if he can go home. 10-23-2010 the group is driving as Jed is filming the amazing, diverse Illinois landscape. I can say that because I'm actually from Illinois. And it's such a wide variety of flat, on top of more flat, with more flat. Um, we find out that the killer is on the loose. Griffin calls, freaking out, which they dis- the group dismisses his concerns. And they proceed to get pissed off at Jed, who is still filming. Jed confronts Griffin as the girls complain about... Uh, who's going to set up the campsite. Who's going to set up the campsite. Because I guess Jed is known for not setting up the campsite. 
and letting uh, the douche twins uh, do it. Tyler and Gavin return with a cooler full of beer. Well, they they storm. Okay, so during this whole fight, they go storm off, and they're like, "We're going to get beer," and we invited lady friends, and. So they go storm off, and you don't actually see anybody set up the tent. And honestly, these are not hard tents to set up. You see very poor attempts to setting them up. But they're not it. hard. They're not. They're just simple dome tents. I've set up a dome tent by myself. The rain fly sucks doing that by yourself, though. So they return. The camp is set up, and the fire is burning. Jed rags on Tyler and Gavin about the girls they had the last time and how they were the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Andrea comes back and tells them they heard on the radio that they had a suspect in custody. Griffin is feeling better. Gavin decides to change the subject of dragging the barrel for girls and wants to go back to the house. Jed agrees, only if he can bring his camera and they can say anything. And they can't say anything. In the truck, more talk about ugly girls happens. At this point, I'm so bored of this conversation. <laughs> they pull over and play around with Jed and take his camera. Have shots on the hood and piss Jed off, then get back on the road. Have you ever had hood shots? Can't say I have. Neither have I. Jed tries to get them to pull over and let him drive. He explains, no, it's not the house. Then they pull up to Tom's grave? Did they go to, like, Tom's grave? Thomas Colton's grave. Yeah. De Jed and the douchebag twins go into the graveyard... And Jed is being a child as he tries to find the drunken two. After Jed starts freaking out because he's a good little girl. I find it kind of interesting that now that Jed is kind of freaked out, he kind of converts over to a country accent. Yeah. His accent changes. Yeah. He has no accent to begin with, but now that he's kind of freaked out, he has a country accent. Yeah, after Jed starts freaking out, the uh, two idiots jump out and try to scare him, which was successful. They uh, they got an achievement unlocked that night. <laughs> uh, then they told him to follow them to the grave of Tom. Then we hear a sound, and Jed tries to get the guys to come with him. Next, they go to the house, and to their surprise, there is a cop station out front. Who would have thunked it? Mm. Brilliant idea. Gavin calls 911, which is not a felony at all, to report a false break-in, which is not a felony at all. And the station, the station cop, which I guess is the only cop in this town. You missed a detail. What? So, they, they scared Jed. He realizes his battery camera is low. They go back to the truck, and then his battery is fully charged. Magic. I don't understand how. Backup battery? But it didn't say anything about him changing the battery. I don't know. Magic battery. I don't understand... But anyway... Magic battery. Uh, so the cop goes, Hi, I'm the sheriff. Uh, goes to the <laughs> to investigate the call. Then Gavin s starts to run towards the house. I mean, they were smart about calling the cops, though, because they know they live in a small town and there's limited yeah, cops, so they yeah. figured they made a false call, the cop would have to leave. Yeah, but, I mean, they can trace your call, too. I mean, it is a cell phone. It's not like you did it from a pay phone. They could trace your number. But yeah. you have to be on the line for so long. They have to have a reason to trace your whereabouts. I know, I know. It's a small town. It's a small town. I mean, I guess people have called 911 on super things. So, uh, 
And Gavin starts to run towards the house, followed by the rest. And they are really allowed to be sneaking into a house. Like, they would wake up the neighborhood loud. We find out that Gavin went into the house. But Tyler is like, we need to go get him. So the crew go into the house. And are shocked that it's an active crime scene with all sorts of blood. Who knew? Who knew? A bunch of people got murdered there. Duh. Uh, duh. But it's still like wet blood, which sort of annoyed me. Because blood doesn't stay wet for very long. No. Then they were we... all freaked out by the amount of blood in the home and the symbol on the wall that was written in blood. Yeah. Then we hear a loud bang and blood drips from the ceiling. And they proceed upstairs because they're idiots. Hey, look, there's blood from the ceiling. You, what should we do? Let's go investigate. Come on, guys. We're the Scooby-Doo gang. Griffin and the girls are downstairs. Griffin hears something, and he decides they need to go investigate. As Griffin opens the basement door, Gavin slams the door. The door shuts and tells them that they need to see something. He reveals it's a dead body that they know. Go find out it's t uh, Tyler, and they contaminate the crime scene even more. And then Gavin disappears. I think that's what bothers me this entire time, that they're contaminating this crime scene. They find him in the bathroom, pissing in a tub. Because that's what everybody does. So Tyler closes the door on him. As as he does, Gavin starts freaking out, and when they open the door, uh, there is blood all over the place, and Gavin is gone. Next, Tyler is scared, then goes, then gets grabbed and sucked into the attic. They run down the stairs to find everything is bolted up. Griffin yeah, wants the front door is bolted and locked. Yeah. Griffin wants to smash a window to get out, but Jed said, no, they will go upstairs and find an open window. Okay, I, I never... Let's go upstairs and find an open window so we can jump and break our legs. It's only a two-story house. Yeah, but you can still do some serious damage. Especially if you don't stretch before you jump out of a window. If you land wrong, you can actually kill yourself. Did you know that? Well, they say he thinks it's a joke. It's just a joke. They go upstairs to look for an open window. Andre keeps trying to tell Jed that this is no joke, but he refuses to listen. So they go upstairs, and then they realize that all the windows are nailed shut. And they all start freaking out. And Jed is like, it's okay. It's just a huge prank, bro. And they're like, let's make out. Next we see a cop pull up. He spills his coffee because reasons. We have to have a distraction somehow. As we see a man walk up with a scythe, and he, we hear the cop being cut up. It so let's just throw it open. Well, I mean, he sort of goes to black, and you just hear it being cut up. The argument between Andrea and Jed continue over not being a joke in the windows. Andrea disappears, so now Jed realizes things are real now. Griffin and the other girl come upstairs. And try to help find Andrea. Jed goes into the basement. You know, the one that the man previously set his family on fire in. He finds her on a table in the corner, covered in blood. He is struck as he gets to her. Then drug to the other side of the room. But his camera gets it all on film. Griffin and the unimportant girl are still on the search. Don't know her name. She's not important. Heidi, I think. Or... I don't know. But now, don't know where Jed and Andrea are. Griffin notices that the basement door is ajar and decides to investigate. He takes the camera with him and tells Heidi, okay, Heidi, to stay Heidi. back. Heidi. <laughs> he notices a bloody mess down there. And then she screams. So he runs back up to the main floor. 
Griffin opens the door. To see Gavin, chilling, waiting for him by his neck. Uh, to the camera is on the floor, and we see a pair of legs sneak up behind Griffin, and then the camera cuts off. Next, we see a couple drive up to the house. Shocked that they bought the house, they are super excited. They go in and start making plans, such as the baby room is going to go here, and it's going to be blue, or pink, or yellow, or fuchsia, or maroon, or mauve. Yep, they go into each room trying to decide, you know, what they're going to do with each one. They flip a light as they're going up the stairs, and it blows a fuse, and have to go to the basement to correct the breaker. When the husband pulls the chain to the basement light, the killer is there to meet him. And And that is the the end end of the film. film. Like I said, it it has a really slow start. And like Buddy Man said at the very beginning, because it is amateur film, and so it's very shaky in the beginning. But it has a slow start. I really did enjoy the end of the film. But... We do encourage you guys to view the film for yourself and come up with your own opinions. Well, with that said, what's your rating? I give it a three. Really? I seem like a douche. (laughs) I think there were room for improvement, but you have to realize it's amateur film. You can't rate it the same way you would rate. I was just rating it as a viewer. I was not rating it as. I was just rating it as somebody who. You can't rate it the same way you'd rate regular film because it's amateur film. I get that, but I expected some more. Well, you always expect more, but you're always gonna expect more because you are viewing it after the fact and you're seeing all the things that where there's room for improvement. But like I said, you don't know no, I what ra- the director intended. I rated uh, the first watch. I rated it as <clears throat> as a film that is being honestly pushed heavily as a film. It doesn't because I mean, there's plenty of like bad bajillion dollar movies out there. I don't view my rating I don't give my rating based on other people's opinions. No, I, I'm not saying that but I'm just saying I'm rating it but I'm not rating it as a I'm not putting it in a separate category. I'm not going to change my rating because of if it's high budget or low budget. I'm not saying you should change your rating it's your opinion. That's the whole point it's your opinion. Okay. So you give it a three. So, all right, explain why. Because, like I said, I think it had a very. I really enjoyed the ending of the film, but I think the beginning was it. It had a slow start, but I really did like the ending of the film. It's just getting there. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth it if you can get to the end. It's getting to the to end. To the end, okay. And trying to understand what's going on to get to the end. And some people may have issues with that because, like I said, you said some people may have issues with the shakiness of the camera at the beginning. And I said some people may have issues with the profanity because some people don't like profanity. And it's excessive. It's unnecessarily excessive. It is excessive. No, no, um, no. I don't mind profanity in horror films if it's. If it feels like it fits. It well, just the thing is, doesn't... he was trying to portray how people talk at that age, and it was accurate. I guess. It, it's accurate for what he was trying to portray. So, these are my qualms with the film. I don't feel like, with the fir- the first family that they mentioned, there was very little character development, but the family died within less than 24 hours. Uh, it only took 24 hours for weird things to start happening with the first family. Yeah, there um, was no wait period. You know, usually when you have ghosts and weird things like that to happen, but, you know, I don't feel like there was a lot of detail that was given and how it was given was awkward. 
how is some random kid going to piece all this together and know all these details and just, how it was given and how it was explained was And then you're just, dealing with like urban legend and yeah. It wasn't really urban legend. It was this person knew this person and it was kind of one of those situations. But anyway, how all that was explained I think could have been fine-tuned some and explained a little bit better. And the lines that are said from the first family are read as if they're read off of cue cards or something. And the first family in the film don't really feel like a family. They don't interact like a family. They just feel very stiff and like forced. Their relationship feels forced. Okay. Jed and all the guys, they feel comfortable with each other. They're friends. You can tell they're friends outside of the film. They're used to being around each other. They're used to hanging around each other. Griffin, Jed, all, Tyler, all them. You could tell that they have a relationship. They developed a relationship. You could tell that by the way they act around each other. You could tell that they have a relationship. They've developed a relationship. They're used to being around each other. But the mother, the daughter, the son, the dad... The way they said their lines just was very robotic. It w didn't feel natural. How they read their lines wasn't how you normally speak. It sounded very robotic, unnatural. Like they were just reading it. They weren't having like normal everyday conversations. It just didn't feel, it just felt forced to me. Anyway, that's my qualms. Slow start, all that. But the ending was really good. I really enjoyed the ending. It was just a matter of getting to it. I want to be a douchebag. Well, if you don't enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. Everybody's not going to like it. So, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. Okay. Uh, and here's my qualms. The movie falls flat. The dialogue is lame. Um... There's really no character development. They're very one-dimensional. Um, the crutchy concept is more of a distracting than not. Like, it just bothers, you know, using corrupted... Because usually with digital corruption files, they're usually pretty corrupted. I mean, you could say fracking, you know, like a fracked... Like, over usage, if, you know, like... Was like found on a hard drive, or you know, the the car was used one too many times and not defract or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's corrupted. But usually, when a corrupted fi digital file happens, it literally means that it's un usable, like unusable. Unusable. Yeah. Where there are large chunks, the way that they used it was a defract feeling. Mm -hmm. It's just like there was glitches in it. Like it was not a good card. Like, it could have been... You could simply have said that it was a low-quality card that they bought. Like, he was an amateur filmmaker, so he didn't know he needed a high speed. He was on a budget. Because people who do that, and they don't realize, like, cards and stuff like that, they need certain type of cards. Mm -hmm. That they are that they buy the wrong card for what they want, and it can come across as very glitched. Um, so, that's just... I just don't like when people say corrupted because to me corrupted is it is no longer usable. You can maybe retrieve like 5% or something. Right. But the rest of it is gone. Um, and I guess I, I really just don't like the fragmenting thing. And it said supposedly the video footage was from five different people? Yeah. And I only counted maybe two. No, it was from the original family. Yeah. Griffin, Jed, who else? Exactly. And that's going to be another thing I'm going to get into. Um, the douche twin twins aren't fun. Uh, you just sort of want them to die. <laughs> to me, I just... Again, they're one-dimensional douchebags. You know, like, I even had friends that were like that. But after a while, like... They weren't always douchey, if that makes sense. Like, I just felt like they laid on the douche strong. 
Yeah, you could have shown other parts of them other than them just being wanting to drink all the time and bang ugly chicks. Yeah. That's the only thing they talked about yeah. at all. It And Jed, he had nice parts about him. And then it's like he was the one that wrangled but the it, other two. But again, it's like he's the only one that has sort of like multi-dimensions where the rest of them had... Like, Griffin was always just sort of, like, timid and weak is the best way to do it. And then, like, his girlfriend, like, Jed's girlfriend was just sort of, like, all the girls are just sort of there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't really bring anything to the... No. One of them, like, that Haley girl, she talked several times before I realized who the freak her name was. That's why I didn't document it. Yeah. Because her name wasn't mentioned. I didn't document it until her name was mentioned. And a lot of them were just were like sacrifices, basically. You know, like... Um, the backstory is lame. And I hate to keep saying it's lame. It's just the backstory is just... It didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't make sense. We had to rewind the fi- or, well, back up the film. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> rewind. So how old we are. We had to back up the film at least twice and replay it to try to understand what the story was as far as there was his family, the guy found his wife was cheating, he was a welder. Yada, yada, blah, 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 yeah. You know, to really try to understand the finite details. What? How in the hell could any teenager find out this kind of gossip about this family from 15 years ago? Yeah. What? And then... It just doesn't make any sense. Some more things I have problems is there's a lot that goes on in the day in this movie. A lot. Yeah. I mean, this day is like slam-packed. You know, <laughs> like most movies this would happen over like a week or a month. A couple of days at least. A couple of days. A whole damn day. It's a lot in a day, dude. Um, yeah, cussing. Sit down. Aww. Uh, and uh, some other things. Uh, if you're selling a house, uh, you have to disclose the deaths that are that are recent, up to a certain point. So I'm pretty sure. Well, he said 15 years ago. But I still think you sort of have to disclose that there was a fire in the house, down in the basement. That house looked really good to have a fire in it. I would have thought if the fire was in the basement, it would have caused some it structural. Caused quite a bit of damage. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know what I'm saying. He burned bodies in the basement. Well, and so there are some like realism problems I have, like that. There would have been this. I mean, you would have to do some serious renovation to get the smell out of burnt bodies. You, you would have well, to. Well, the kid said that you know the people that came to work on the house got all of them got hurt. Okay, all the bo- okay, all the workers. But that doesn't say that doesn't mean that they took out all the drywalling, all of the insulation, mm-hmm. because that smell, that smoke smell, will get in there. Yeah. Like if 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 you've ever heard somebody who's like been on a crew that has gone to somebody where somebody has died for an extended period of time in a house, they basically had to replace everything, like the insulation and stuff. Because the smell just penetrates. The smell of death penetrates everything. And and it's hard to get out. Mm -hmm. So, I can't imagine what burning nine people would smell like. No, I think they said five bodies. Okay, there's still a lot of burnt bodies, though. I don't remember the exact number, but But, it was several. Yeah, it it was more than two and less than ten. So, uh, but you think they would have to disclose that. And then, you know, it's, then they're selling it, the house, every, after every death now? I don't know. The finite details are questionable, but 
with that aside, even with that aside, looking at it at its surface and considering, like you said, most of the characters are two-dimensional, that's really what we have one, to do. One, one, one. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, and finally, I'm still not done. Finally, it, this movie is forgettable. It's a Blair Witch wannabe. Uh, I don't discourage that from creating, but Lost Film is tiring. And horror, basically what I have to say, horror is all about emotion. And if you can't convey fear or any other emotion, it fails as a horror film. That's really what you have to convey, I'm terrified. You know, it has to trigger that, that flight, uh, fight, fight or flight sense. I mean, that's the whole point of a good horror film. Well, that's what I said. It's... The ending is good. Yeah. It's just you have to understand what's going on up to that point. Or you don't want to get to the end. And then, you know, some other things that sort of, like, you know... And the the guy didn't even... the So, when we first introduced to this house and the killer... At least he waits till night. He doesn't wait till night with the new house. New house people. They really have time to kick the mud off their boots, nonetheless, before they get killed. Yeah, he killed them at night. No, no, at the end. Oh, yeah, it was during the day. It was during the day, and they're still looking at the house. They barely got the, the, the boots knocked off their boots. The mud off their boots before he goes and kills them. I think it was just because they came down in the basement and he was down there. I get that, but, I mean, and the other thing that sort of bothered me a little bit was the guy had no, there was no motivation. Like, what was the motivation of the killer? To kill everybody because this is his house? He's the unlisted owner. I get that, but you just don't know anything about the killer. Except for that really expounded upon rumor that the one kid tells you about. That makes no sense. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just not thrilled. This movie... I'm okay with amateur films and trying to get your feet wet and trying to, to do different things. I respect that. It has n- at no point is my critique at all trying to discourage... It's just, as an artist myself, you have to realize that there will be, not everything is going to be gold. And you have to take a hard truth to yourself. And, I mean, I respect him for what he's done, and I'm glad that it's on Amazon and stuff like that. I think that in itself is an accomplishment, the fact yeah. that it's out there. And... Everybody's going to have a different opinion about it, for sure. I don't think it's horrible. I've seen worse. Um, But I do think it's hard to get through the first half of the film to get to the ending. But I think the ending is really good. But we also don't like, you know, and I think a lot of our issue, too, is... It's not our favorite genre of horror films. So it usually makes... It is not one of our favorites. So it makes it very hard for us to enjoy. There's only been a handful of like found footage films I enjoy. A yeah, handful. Like two. There's only been about two of them that we've actually been like. This is one of the, you know. Yeah. So we do encourage you guys to view it and form your own opinion. Don't solely go on ours and. Um, definitely do that to support the new upcoming directors and yeah because I'm works. because I mean I I feeling I have a feeling he, I mean if given if, I'm sure this won't be the last one that he does no but I mean if given the right direction and the right sort of film I think he could actually do really good that, like he has ideas. They're not bad ideas. Is trying to 
just make it convincing to be realistic. If that makes sense. I think, you know, a lot of things just, to me, it, it took me out of it because it wasn't realistic. I don't know. I think it definitely could have been improved upon. Yeah. Which, that's probably with anything, but. All right, I think we're done with this for for another night. Oh, yeah, I suggest don't ever drink, get the peanut butter beer. It's just, it's too, I can't do it. It's one of the very few beers that I just can't do. So beer and peanut butter is not a good combo? <sighs> it's not that as much as, I could go for like a really, sm like, like, it could be used as like a mixer or something. Mm -hmm. Like it could be used as in some sort of application. But drinking it just straight up, like it could be done smaller. You know, like you know, like those little small like Coke cans that they have out. Mm -hmm. It could be done twelve fluid ounces or one pint. It's just too much of that uh, because it's a very rich peanut butter on top of it. Um, I guess I just like you could do like a peanut. Butter and jelly drink. Shot. Yeah. Mm, that don't even sound good. But, like, you could put grape vodka or something in it, or. It's just. Just straight up, though, it is, it, it is a hard drink. It, you know, it's like a hard to get through. Yeah. Because it also screws up your mind, too. Because you're like, you're so used to eating peanut butter, not. Drinking it. Drinking it. Mm -hmm. And especially with the milk stout. It's just super heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, Jed, thank you for letting us uh, talk about your film. Yeah. And we wish you the best of luck in the future. So, guys, we'll scare you later if you have a good one. All right. Bye.